I've been working on other projects lately. So I had a little bit of time today to go over the Ranger. And another thing I did was just the cooling system. So cooling system, I went ahead and I got a 4.0 radiator off of eBay. It was a aluminum three core for this guy. It was pretty much a direct drop in originally, other than me having to hack off the mounts because they didn't create them properly. But I ran into a problem with that, which was the fan would not fit properly inside of the enclosure, which would have been fine if I wasn't trying to run AC as well. I would have just put the fans on the front and then, you know, a, the radiator, two E fans, and just call it a day. But the issue kind of came that I ended up having overheating issues because I originally threw them on the condenser like an idiot and didn't realize that there was not enough flow. So in, instead, we just kind of hacked up the lower support there, got rid of it. We ended up putting in two SN95 mounts, the, to the, the top mounts on the bottom. I got them welded in. And then I had a Mustang original Fox body mount for the upper mount, which was kind of a U-shape with two uh, rivnuts nuts put in. So with that, I also ran into the problem when I moved it forward, as you can see, that I wouldn't have enough room to put the fill neck in and it would not bleed properly because it wasn't at the high point. So I took this part from a 19, I think 98 Dodge Durango or one of their trucks or something like that. And they sold this part new for like 15 bucks. And as it turned out, it spliced in perfectly with the stock uh, hose. So that was kind of an easy fix. Other thing I ended up doing was I moved the inlet from the front to the side originally because of clearance issues, which you would have to do if you kept the radiator in stock location. But now in hindsight, I didn't have to do that since we ended up pushing it forward anyways. So here's a visual on the lower mount. That's one of them. And then the other one's right here. And I got them welded about not too far away from the both the cross member points. And it's pretty well in line. As you can see, that's how much clearance there is between the front and the radiator itself. Heater hoses, I ended up running them with the stock pipe. There was an Explorer pipe that went to the back, so I used that off of an Explorer. And it routes back here and then goes into the heater core. Now, since it's a 94, and um, I didn't have any problems with it in terms of using any, like, uh, heater valves or anything, since this uses a blend door instead of a vacuum-actuated system. I did have to shorten one of these lines, though, because the way the heater box is on the Explorers, it's different. So it was an easy just kind of cut it and then cut it back and then put the hose in place. If I had to do it again, probably what I would do is get rid of this hose right here and just run that directly to the heater core. And then the hose coming off of this guy, I would also just run that directly to the heater core as well. Just so I don't have the lines going back and then forward again. Okay, so another thing that I worked on with the Ranger with the power steering system. The nice thing that I was able to do was I was able to use all stock lines to actually mount up the Ranger system to the Explorer. So with this guy, what I had to end up doing was I carefully bended this line, because as you know, it goes to a different angle. I bent it up and then I was able to get just enough length on it. I was able to just hook it in right there and it has the exact same thread type as a stock power steering pump. So it all just connected fine. And then I was able to use the old, just a hose, and then just run that to the return. Since it's not a pressurized return, it's just, you know, not that big of a deal. It's just like, okay, just plug it in and go. And that's been working pretty well. I've had to tighten it up a little bit, but otherwise it's been fine. So that's just kind of some food for thought.